So the fourth kind of compound that we need to learn how to name are substances that we call hydrocarbons. And we can identify hydrocarbons fairly easily because when you look at one of them, such as this right here, at first they look like binary molecular compounds because after all they are composed of two elements, carbon and hydrogen, hence the name hydrocarbons. But uh, in this particular case, even though they are molecules and they are binary and they are compounds, if the two elements involved are just carbon and hydrogen, then we name them differently than other binary compounds. We name them as hydrocarbons. Now, they're fairly easy to name if you know two things. First thing is, you need to recognize what ratio of carbon to hydrogen you have in the compound. And there are three ratios we see typical of hydrocarbons. The simplest one is when you have exactly twice as many hydrogens as you have carbons. For instance, if I had two carbons in my hydrocarbon and I had four hydrogens, then I would know that it's a type of hydrocarbon called an alkene. On the other hand, if we have one like the example we have right here, where we have not twice as many hydrogens as carbons, but we have too many, two additional, two additional hydrogens beyond twice as many as you have carbons. For instance, 2 times 6 is 12, but this is not 12, this is 2 more than 12. We have the CxH2x plus 2 type thing. This would be called an alkane. This is a hydrocarbon known as an alkane. On the other hand, if I saw this chemical formula for a hydrocarbon, well, 2 times 3 is 6, but if I remove 2 more and had 4, this is a completely different type of hydrocarbon. It has the x to 2x minus 2 ratio of carbon to hydrogen, and it would be called an alkyne. So when we go to name these molecules, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen is going to give us the suffix, the ending of the name. All alkanes end in A-N-E in their name. All alkenes end in the suffix E-N-E, and all alkynes end with the suffix Y-N-E at the end of the name. You might say there are all kinds of alkenes and alkanes. Anyhow. How do we get the prefix that goes with the name to name these things? Well, that's where you hopefully know the Greek prefixes for numerical values from 5 through 10. For instance, if you have 5 of something, we know it's called penta. And if we have 6, we use the prefix hexa. And for 7, we use hepta. For 8, we use octa. For 9, we use Nona, and for 10 itself, we use the prefix deca. Now, unlike binary compounds that use mono, di, tri, and tetra for 1, 2, 3, and 4, for hydrocarbons, we do have to know four other numerical prefixes. For hydrocarbons ex exclusively, number one uses the prefix meth. If there are two, as we're going to see, we're going to, instead of, of using the prefix di, we use the prefix eth. If there are three of something, as we're going to see, instead of using tri, we use prop. And if there are four, instead of tetra, we're going to use the prefix but. Now, let's put it all together. How would we name a hydrocarbon? Well, as an example, this one right here, C3. H4. Well, the beginning of the name depends upon the number of carbons in the hydrocarbon. And if we have three, and we know that the prefix for three is prop, we know the first part of this hydrocarbon's name is prop. Then how do you get the suffix? Well, then you look at the ratio of carbon to hydrogen. Is it exactly two hydrogens to one carbon? Is it two fewer than twice as many, or is it two more than twice as many? 
In other words, is the ratio that of an alkene, an alkane, or an alkyne? Well, in this example, and the way I like to do it, I just take the number of carbons, 3. I multiply by 2, and I get 6. Well, this is not a 6, so it's not the alkene. It is 2 fewer than 6, so I know this is an alkyne. And all I do is add Y-N-E to the name, and I now have named this hydrocarbon as propyne. How about this one up here? Well, C6, H14. Well, six carbons would use hex as a prefix. And if I doubled six, I get 12. And this is not 12, it's two more than 12, so it's an alkane. It has this ratio of carbon to hydrogen. So I just tack on the suffix ane. We have hexane. In the case of this particular hydrocarbon here, C2H4, well, the prefix for two carbons is F. And of course, two times two is four, so this is exactly a one to two ratio. If it's exactly one to two, then it's an alkene, and the end of the word would be ene, and we have the hydrocarbon ethene. So hydrocarbon nomenclature is simple. The root of the name is based upon how many carbons, meth, eth, prop, but, penta, hex, hept, oct, non, dec, and then the end of the name, the suffix, is a function of the ratio of carbon to hydrogen. If it's two to one, it's an ene. If it's one to two plus two, it's an ene. If it's one to two minus two, then it is an ine. Simple enough.